Thank you very much, Charles. Hi, everybody. I'm super excited to show you the new functionality of the Surveying Terrain module inside the brand new Civil Designer 8.2. First up, I'm going to show you how you go about importing names via an ASCII file. In front of me, I have a survey. This survey doesn't have any names at this stage. So I'm going to show you how you go about importing the names. If in your survey mode, you go to File, you go and specify Import. Now, some of you may be familiar with the ASCII Heights function. This is very similar, but in this case, I'm importing the names. Which file would you like to use? Click on Open. Right, so that is what my file looks like. Click on Next. Here you would go and specify what to import. I'm not importing the Z coordinate, it's not necessary. The Civil Designer uses the Y and X values of the incoming data to locate the existing surveyed points. I then click on Finish. And as you can see, I now have the names imported. The first of the strings function that I'm going to show you is how you go about displaying contours and slope arrows. In version 8.1, you had to convert your string into a terrain surface before you could do this. In 8.2, you'll be happy to know that it's no longer necessary. You simply go to your TV screen, you select your string settings, and on the bottom right, you go and select draw contours. Specify your display settings you'd like to use and click on OK. You'll see then immediately you have your contours. At the same time, if you'd like to work with your slope arrows, I'll go back to my display settings, go and switch off my contours, and switch on draw slope arrows. Again, I can go and specify which display settings to use. The arrows are drawn on invisible triangles between the child and the parent string. If for stormwater purposes, you'd like to have them both displayed, you would then again go back to your display settings, go and select string settings, and then turn on your draw contours. Now at any stage, if you need to change the parent string, you can do that. And you'll see that the contours and your slope arrows get updated dynamically. A lot of you out there really don't appreciate the next function. Perhaps you've been in a situation where you've gone and created a project, but you don't quite know which projection settings to use. Because it may be that you're working in North Africa or somewhere in the UK. In this case, we've made it easier for you and we give you a function called presets. If I go and select the presets button, you can go and specify in which region and country your project is situated. In this case, I'm then going to select Sub-Saharan Africa. I'm then going to browse down to South Africa, 30 to 32 degrees east. And then I'm then going to choose Hot Abyss Hook 94. Click on OK. If you would prefer to use the traditional way of setting up your projection settings, you can click on the traditional button. Alternatively, if you want to go and search for a region, we give you the option to go and type in, in this case, Britain. And Civil Designer will then give you the two options. I go and select OSGP. In that case, I am confident that my projection settings are correct. In version 8.1 of Civil Designer, when you were working with strings, you had to convert the string into a terrain surface and then calculate your volumes. In 8.2, you'll be very happy that volumes beneath the string family can be calculated. Not only that, but then you can also ask Civil Designer to optimize your cut and fill volumes. Let me show you an example. First of all, I'm going to go and calculate normal volumes between my string and surface number one. If you look at the output bar, we got about 3.2 cubic meters of cut and about 6,800 cubes of total fill.
So now I'm going to take it a step further. I'm going to ask civil designer to go and optimize the cut and fill volumes for me. I'm then again putting an optimization difference of 2%. In this case, what Civil Designer does is it calculates the volumes. If the volumes aren't within the 2%, it then takes the elevations of your surface and makes it higher or lower until the 2% is reached. If you look in the output bar again, this time you'd find that we've got about 940 cubic meters of cut and fill optimization. You'll also be very happy to know that we have an undo or redo function. In this case, I'm going to go and close my strings. And then I'm going to ask Civil Designer to recalculate the optimization volumes. If you look at my plan view, you'll see that the hatch has been updated. It doesn't only include the banks, but the entire string surface. So if I were to go back to strings, I'm using the 2% again. Civil Designer recalculates. And in the output bar, I've got my new volumes. So in this case, I've got about 5,800 cubic meters of cut full optimization. Perhaps some of you have heard of a digital elevation map file or DEM file. It is a type of compressed image file that contains X, Y, and Z point data. Previously, only a certain type of TIFF files were supported. As of version 8.2, various TIFF files are supported. I'm going to show you what it's all about. So I'm going to go to File, Import, and go and select a TIFF DEM. Go and specify which file to use and what surface I'd like to import it in. These are now terrain points on the DTM, as this particular site has about three and a half million points. If I were to zoom in, not only do I have the X, the Y, but I also have the Z coordinate. A lot of you diehard civil designer fans are really going to enjoy the next function. It is called the grade points, and it's done relative to another point. If you think back to your vertical grade function inside the strings module, this is very similar, but you're working with DTM points. I'm going to show you how it works. I'm going to go to graphical grade from point. I'm going to do this to a new point. I'm going to use the bottom right point here as a reference. I go and click on the reference point. I go and specify a particular grade. And then I'm going to go and create new points. So I go and click on my point. What Civil Designer does is it uses your 1 in 50 grade, it calculates the length from your last click, and then it automatically goes and inserts the height. You can go and specify a name if need be. In your output bar, you'll see that the new information has been generated as well as a dialog. I'm going to click on OK. Go to the next point, same thing happens, and a new point is inserted with the height. Of course, you can do this in any direction. I'm then going to change my grade and go and click on a point higher up. Still using this function, I'm not only going to show you how you go about editing existing points. Specify your grade, click on your reference point, and go to an existing point. Civil Designer goes and shows you the new and the old level of your existing point. Now, using that new point, I'm going to use that as my reference point, and then change my grade and go and click on the existing surveyed points. As I'm doing this, you can see the new elevations in my output bar. And this is really going to help you. So you no longer have to do manual calculations.
In 8.1, you were able to rename your child string, but you weren't able to rename your parent. So we've listened to our clients and we now give you the option. If I go and select my child, I go to the properties, I could then go and rename my child string. If I do the same for my parent and I go to my properties, you'll see I'm not able to change the parent string name. In 8.2, you now go to strings, string editing, and you specify rename parent string. In this case, I'm going to go and rename it as platform. If I now go and select the parent string, I go back to my properties, you can see the new name of the parent being platform. Who would have known you were able to rename your parent? And on that bombshell, Charles, back to you. Cheers, everyone. Thanks for watching.